In the Scandinavian countries, we constantly seem to hear news articles about how stress is getting worse, with everyone having their own opinion and or solution. So I thought it would be interesting to see how stress will affect a purely simulated environment, only affected by math. And with that idea, I began my latest project, a school performance under pressure simulation. You might fairly be asking, what is this school performance simulation? Well, it is a program that I have made in Unity that tries to simulate a school environment. 21 students will be given 30 days to complete a course with the best grades possible. They will be in school all 7 days of the week, and the user can control how many hours a day they will be in the school, and how many hours of homework they will have. But here's the interesting part. They will be graded with a final score between 1 and 100. However, the more time they spend in school, the more stressed they will become. And how stressed they are will affect their final score. What could turn out quite interesting is that I want the program to save the student's data whenever the simulation is done. This data I can then analyze and maybe find some interesting correlations. But before that, I need to introduce the students. Please forgive the terrible animation, I only have like a month or two of experience. Each student will be created with semi-random attributes, meaning that the attributes are within a specified range. These attributes are how easy they learn, how easy they forget, how easily they get stressed, and how easily they unstress. However, I must admit that forget didn't make it all the way to the final program. Now, I won't bore you to death with my terribly written code. However, I will show you the quite simple math involved to give you an understanding of how all this is working. If you just want to see the results, then skip to the time marked on screen now. It is quite simple. Whenever the students go to school, they gain a certain amount of final score and stress for each hour they spend in school. These values are then multiplied with their attributes. So for example, a student might have a learning ability of 1.5 meaning that the student will learn 50% quicker than others. The same goes for stress. The gain and final score will also depend on the amount of stress each student has. So that will be added on as well. And if a student is so unlucky that they end up hitting a stress number of 100, the program will determine that the student has reached the point of depression, and it therefore sets their final score to zero. Whenever the students are not in school or doing homework, their stress will go down. How efficient they are at lowering it depends entirely on their attributes, and some students might have a hard time doing this. Well, at this point we encounter a problem. These values. What should they be? Because I could easily just insert any number right here, but that would probably give us some rubbish results. So I need to find data. And that can't be so difficult, right? Well, as it turns out, getting data on stress is really difficult. <laughs> I tried a couple of different sources, but I only found three that were somewhat useful. They will all be linked in the description. The first was a science paper by the Southern Danish University from 2010 that shows on page 40 that 11.3% 11 of men and 21.3% of women between the age 16 and 24 as often feel nervous or stressed, which I will assume is the age that most students find themselves in. This puts us in the right direction, but still not quite there. Another site, NetDoctor, shows that 500,000 of Danish citizens suffer from depression throughout their life, which is just an alarming number, given that it means that 9% of the entire population suffers from depression at some point or another. However, it does make statistics like these make more sense. The last site that I made some conclusions from is actually a news article. Yeah, my source integrity isn't the best. But it gave me something that I just could not resist. An actual useful number. It says, It is advised to not have more than 30 to 35 hours of school a week to avoid stress. Now, how accurate is this statement? I have no clue. <laughs> I was not able to find a source for this, but to be honest, I was not trying that hard either, so I could probably have missed it. 
but this we can work with, so I don't care. So this is how I did it. First, the stress in the program is a number between 1 and 100, so I concluded that between 0 and 33 means that the student is mildly stressed, between 33 and 66 is medium stressed, and 66 to 100 is very stressed. So far so good, right? And you're probably already getting bored. <laughs> so in summary, I used this equation to find my stress amount. I set the de-stress amount to 0.5 since I find it logical that it's easier to get stress than to avoid it. I set the final score amount to 0.25 since through testing it seemed to land the best results. The ability to learn ranges between 0 and 100. The ability to stress and de-stress is between 0 and 60 since I didn't want it to be too top heavy. Now we can finally get started looking at the program. This is the main menu. Right here is an explanation screen, in case you've forgotten how it works. On the right side there are some sliders, so you can choose how many hours the students will be in school a week. And here you can run the simulation. It will run for approximately 3 minutes. And as you can see on the right screen, you'll see the hours that the students spent in school. They'll just kind of teleport in and out. And on the left side, you'll see a graph that daily shows their average stress. So it takes all 21 students and finds their stress on average. This graph has a tendency to become linear, which I'm assuming is because it is an average. And as you can see right here, whenever the student starts laying on the table like they've done right here, it's the way the program's way of telling us that that person has reached the point of depression. And whenever the program is done, it tells us what the final score on average for the class is, and it tells us that it has created a file that we can use. So I ran this program a bunch of times, first with two hours of school and one hour of homework, then with 4 hours of school and 2 hours of homework, then 8 hours of school and 2 hours of homework, which I think is probably what is uh, average for most students, or at least that teachers expect for most students, <laughs> then 10 hours of school, 1 hour of homework, and 12 hours of school and 3 hours of homework a day. In total I had 3 runs for each of these scenarios. I then took and found the average for them, and this average I made a graph of. If we look at the first scenario of 2 hours of school and 1 hour of homework, we can see that none of them actually managed to get any stress. However, none of them got a high score either. So, and that makes sense, right? Since they didn't spend time in school, they didn't spend time studying, they won't get a, a high grade. So that's quite logical. However, if we look at the graph, that means also that we can pretty much ignore the attributes of stress and de-stress. Please don't forget, I didn't manage to get it out of the program before making this. But that will also mean that the only, the only attribute that actually affected their results is the learning attribute, which quite correctly stems over when we look at the graph. 4 hours of school seems to be exactly the same. The scenario with 8 hours of school and 2 hours of homework is definitely the most interesting one in my opinion. If we look at student 11 and 15, they have the highest final score, and they also have the highest learning ability. This could be concluded to mean that the student with the highest learning ability simply gets the best grades. However, there's more to it. Um, if we look here, the next highest scores is somewhat close between 1, 8, 18 and 21. And they also seem to be quite close in terms of learning ability. And something that is somewhat interesting to notice is that if we look at both 1 and 21, they have a lower learning ability than 8 and 18. However, 1 and 21 does more easily get de-stressed than they get stressed, which is not the case for 8 and 18. So from this, we could conclude that to be in top of the class, the students need to either be quicker to learn than others, or the students need to be better at avoiding stress than gaining it. Also, 
if we look at the students with the lowest grades, which is student 12, we can see that even though students 12 actually have better learning abilities than many of the other students, 12 has problems with avoiding stress. So I might conclude from that that if a student is not in the top of the class, that they might be more important to balance stress rather than learning ability. When we look at the scenario for 10 hours of school, we can see that multiple of the students managed to hit the point of depression at 100 and therefore reached a final score of 0. The only ones that really managed to avoid this was the ones that have an easier time getting de-stressed than stressed. The only exception to this seems to be student 20, who has a bit easier time getting stressed than de-stressed, however it's very close. So I think from this like, you could conclude that when it comes to having l long hours or many hours of school, it is more important to manage stress than to p manage performance. Lastly, looking at the scenario of 12 hours of school and 3 hours of homework, every student managed to reach the point of depression, which basically shows that no matter how good you are at avoiding stress, if you are forced to, like they are in this scenario, there's no real way of avoiding it and you will hit your limit at some point. Whew, that took a while. So, to summarize, what I conclude from these graphs, and bear in mind that this will be generalized a lot, is that first, if a student don't spend enough time studying, the student won't get high grades. Second, to reach the top of the class in grades, a student ne will need to be able to learn quickly. Third, to be around the middle of the class in grades, a student can be either quick at learning or be good at avoiding stress. Fourth, even if a student learns quickly, they can't, if they can't deal with stress, their grades will suffer. Five, when having a lot of work, balancing stress becomes more and more important. Sixth, all students have a breaking point, and if stress is not balanced, the point will be hit eventually. Now, how accurate are these data actually? Can these conclusions be used for anything? Absolutely not. <laughs> these tendencies might as well come from imperfections in my program, and there are so many factors that my program doesn't account for. That being said, it is interesting to look at what results I got. To be completely honest, they actually turned out more accurate to my point of view than I thought they would have. But do still take it with a, a grain of salt. But at last, that was everything from me this time. This video took a freaking long time to make, so I hope you enjoyed it. Consider leaving a like and maybe subscribing for more content like this. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.